ease for us to go back to the workplace. So we are actually uh, working a work schedule for our staff to minimize the number of people in the office. So uh, the number of uh, infection is uh, dropped from three digit to, to two digit now for the past few yeah. days. So it looks like uh, we all look forward to come back to Perth. And uh, <laughs> you have to, to wait until the government yeah. open the border. Oh, actually, for you, it's not, isn't it? Yeah, but the commercial flight is stopped, so you know we miss. Yeah, uh, yeah. I start to miss both. Yeah. I say, oh, oh you, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, in that regard, you have to use your own jet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I think uh, right. this is good news for down under. Uh, our fellow listener, uh, if you were to follow the, the news in Australia, uh, it is good news that uh, in down under that most of the states are registering zero zero infection and the numbers of. Uh, uh, recovery has been doing well, so similarly with both in Malaysia too, right? So, all right. So, without further ado, let me just uh, uh, to present to you a uh, a few slides about kissed migration. So, yeah. uh, let me share the screen right now. Yeah? Yeah, a bit introduction about myself. Uh, as my colleague Jimmy have shared earlier on, uh, myself and uh, Melanie, we are both registered Australian migration agent. Our license are actually administrated by the Department of Home Affairs. Uh, similarly, I'm also a license holder for Immigration New Zealand. But today I will just speak about uh, Australian migration. So a bit background about Kisan migration. Uh, we have been operating for more than a decade. So uh, our offices spread from Australia to Malaysia, Brunei, and just last year we uh, uh, appointed a working uh, partner in Surabaya, uh, and we are about to start our Indonesia market, but with the COVID-19 coming in, so it looks like uh, that will be on hold for, for maybe uh, in the near future. So uh, we have best of both work, where uh, our team itself, uh, a, a team of 10 staff based in Malaysia office, so we cover KL, Penang, Kota Ginabalu, and also uh, to support you in the onshore, we basically have uh, our own staff based in Adelaide and Brisbane. And in WA, uh, we have a working partner like people like uh, <coughs> Melanie, who is based in Perth. So uh, we will do our best to provide the onshore support for our client once they obtain the permanent visa. So a bit background about my team, right? Uh, in our firm, we have six registered migration agents, uh, as you can see from the screen. Uh, uh, myself uh, and my colleague Moon, we are both Malaysian. So both, both of us has our own specialization in our visa. So uh, my specialization is on the business and the skill migration. So similar with Moon, we both share the same uh, portfolio of visas. So we have been doing an offshore uh, visa application for Malaysian, uh, Singaporean, Bruneian for the last 10 years. So we report to our, our senior agent, migration agent, which is Helen Duncan. So she's very senior in terms of being a registered agent. Uh, she was previously the Vice Counsel of Immigration Australia. And to see how senior we are, you look at our registration number for the first two digits. Right? So Helen Duncan has got a license in the year 2000. So in myself, in 2009. So, and then my other colleague, where, uh, we have Philip Duncan, who is specialized in uh, uh, employer sponsor visa. Right? And similarly, Hamish is also helping out with Philip. And then my the other colleague who specialize in family visa and also in resident return visa. So as I shared earlier, on Kisson team, we consist of, uh, obviously, we are all registered migration agent. Uh, some of my colleagues are lawyer by profession, and some of my colleagues are also chartered accountant. So as I shared, we've been running for the business for the last 10 years. To date, our worldwide customers stand at 14,000 customers worldwide. Uh, and just in Malaysia, uh, operation from the Malaysia office supporting Southeast Asia, we service about 240 families every year. 
So uh, we have been expanding our Malaysia operation. We have, now we have six offices and we have two agencies powering uh, Australia, Malaysia, Brunei and Indonesia. So what service do we provide? Now, initially we will uh, meet up with you and we will give you a free assessment. So uh, in this particular uh, uh, forum that we are having, feel free to stay in touch with us uh, and my colleague. So uh, speak to us, we will be able to run through a free initial assessment for you to find out whether you are eligible for what type of visa. So once we zoom into the right visa, we will map up the visa pathway for you and then we'll make it more simple for you to understand. Huh? So we'll remove all the complex jargon and we will tell you the cheapest and the shortest pathway for your visa. And then when you engage us for a service, the next step is that we will be there with you for the next 12 to 18 months. That's the duration for the visa to be uh, granted from the start of the application until the visa is granted. So we'll be there with you where we will assign uh, one of our sales staff who handle your, handle your documentation for the window documentation culminating within Kisten and yourself. And then we also assign one of our processing staff who is based in our office where she will be communicating with you uh, for documentation over the email and by phone. And our service will not just stop until the visa is approved. We will continue our service even after the visa is approved. That's where we come in to provide our post-grant service. So I myself is a migrant and I have moved to Australia way back about 15 years back. I've experienced a lot of up and down and a lot of questions. So over the years, I start to realize that, okay, uh, there's a lot of questions that are common asked questions. That's where we actually station uh, two Malaysian staff permanently in Adelaide office. And then obviously we have a team back home in Brisbane office where we are there to help you in terms of uh, children education. So we hook up with you people like, like uh, Melanie where they are a counsellor, they'll be able to advise your children in terms of tertiary education, what are the right uh, university to approach, where are the fee options that you have, and then uh, for those who uh, go onshore, we will assist you to register your medical benefit. And for business visa, uh, that's where uh, we are very specialised in this area, where we have a, a permanent staff base in Australia, where he will be supporting you to look for new businesses and also to be able to uh, uh, arrange meeting with broker for you to acquire a new business or existing business. And in terms of tax and legal, we'll be able to hook you up with the right accountant and also with a lawyer. So similarly with housing, uh, we have over the years uh, worked with quite a number of developers all over Australia. So we'll be able to refer you direct to the developer. And then from there, you can actually um, deal with the developer direct to buy your own house or your dream home. Right, I basically end my presentation here. Uh, I will pass over the floor back to Jimmy uh, so that Melanie will come in to do the presentation. And after that, we are open for the Q&A. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. Um, thank you very much, Dato. Um, Melanie, we will pass the floor to you for you to introduce your services and uh, what you actually do um, as an education counsellor and also a licensed migration agent. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Michael. Okay, I'm going to put my slide. Okay, right. Right, so uh, another warm welcome to everyone joining us today. Um, my name is Melanie. I'm based in Perth, Western Australia, which is maybe about, what, five hours from KL? Is it correct, Michael? Yeah, so yes, we have yes, a that's right, that's right. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's just uh, two movies on a plane and you're reached Perth from KL. Very easy. Yeah, so we have uh, the same time zone. Yes, that's so, right. Yes, yeah. um, my company is specialized in uh, migration and international education program for Australia. Right. My background, a little bit about my background is I graduated from the law faculty a few years ago and then worked as a corporate lawyer before I specialized in migration. And six years ago, I branched out to education, international education recruit as well, as I believe migration and education work hand in hand. A lot of parents that, you know, they have children, they can be in the same visa or in fact like a lot of them sending the students to or their children to Australia first and then they have a look at the situation over here and they like it and then they follow the children. Parents always follow the children. All right, so <laughs> we're gonna yeah, start yeah. with 
the current outlook on Australian international education program before and during the COVID-19. The six weeks, they have changed the world. The coronavirus, they have changed everybody's life. And um, a lot of business going to hibernation. But hopefully, we will be opening Australia to everyone, temporary visa holder, especially um, very soon, maybe in the next few weeks. Okay. Migration. Okay, is it all right? Can I continue? Okay. Yeah, the yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I would like to ask, like, you know, a lot of people asking me, um, why Australia? Why we have to send our kids to Australia? Why is not to another country? Several reasons I said to those people, okay, Australia is not just a great place to live. It's also safe, clean, and we also have uh, world-class education. Our universities, some of them are world top university and the qualification is globally recognized. You can take that uh, qualification wherever in the world, they will recognize it, right? The most attractive um, approach for the students, I guess, in Australia, while you are studying, you allow to work, which is not many countries allowing students to work as well while they're studying. If you study in Australia as an international student, the government will allow you to work up to 40 hours per fortnight while you are in session, which is during the semester. And full time or unlimited when you have the semester break. That, is, uh, that will help the student very much in supporting themselves, in having a little bit of allowance, uh, also work experience, yeah? Uh, another um, most attractive approach is what after you finish study? The government in Australia gives you the opportunity to stay in Australia longer while gaining your work experience or give you the pathway for your permanent visa, permanent resident visa, if that is what you want. Right? So when you finish your study in a bachelor degree or apprentice diploma, Considering that you meet the criteria, then you may be able to pursue the next visa as a graduate uh, and then followed by the state nomination, skill migration, which Michael and me will be able to help you in regards to that. So, we move on to the edu Australian education pathway. It's almost similar in every country or when we start or what age we start. So in Australia also the same, we have a school education, which start from primary to secondary, like, you know, so that's gonna take about 13 years to finish, start from primary and then, you know, year seven, year eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12, and then you can go to university. Or for people that doesn't wanna go to university and prefer to do trade and you know, get them more ready into the workplace, they go to what we call is a vocational education and training study. This is more popular for international students. A lot of international students here, they come uh, to study vocational education, right? All right, so there is several requirements for the university or for international students to be able to study in Australia. The most, the most important thing is your English. A lot of people coming from the country where uh, the school does, is not delivered in the English language. So that way, if you come here, you, have, you may have to take extra English course or you can go to the foundation study, which prepare you to go into the university or vocational. Right, so university uh, degree is at the same, bachelor degree, master or diploma. As of in the vocational study, it starts with certificate two, three, and then you can move up to the diploma and advanced diploma. Uh, a lot of uh, international students, they take uh, hospitality, which is very, very um, uh, well in demand, also in the workplace it's kind of like it's very easy for you to have an occupation in hospitality industry for international students during their study with the 20 hours or 40 hours and after they finish so you know hopefully you can be a chef 
or you can be a technician or you can be an electrician so all of that is um, uh, is uh, guided by the vocational education and training right now this is the important thing the visa information so for all the international students that would like to study in Australia as any other people that who wants to work in Australia or to live in Australia you will need a valid visa that is correct for what you want to do so in regard to the education you will need to have a student visa yeah I will be able to guide you on how to apply on what are the requirements and you know some people say can I bring my family if I study here or can I send my children how old the children to be able to study in Australia do they need the guardian so all of that cover in the visa information the requirements right uh, the most important thing if of course can you actually pay for your living costs pay for your tuition fees and extra other like accommodation, travel costs. Uh, if you bring in extra family member, will you be able to support them, right? And the first 12 months is very critical because most of the um, students, they will be focusing on their study. They may not be able to work. So the first 12 months, you will need to have somebody to support you. If it's not yourself, it can be your parents or your spouse or family member, right? Now, we work it out, uh, for example, I'll give you an example of how much do I need if I want to study in Australia. The course is depending on what are you studying and on what level. Of course, if you're studying on university level, the course is more than vocational study. And if you're going to be studying here yourself while your spouse or, you know, if you have a family staying in home country, are you going to bring the family here? Right? Now, the guidance is just the basic guidance for a person or one person to be able to study in Australia to prove the income. It's around 62 to 72,000 with extra person, right? And then after that, you need to have extra for the living cost and for um, accommodation and the travel to go back home. Yeah. So it's very important that can I bring my family? Yes, you can. Of course you can. Now, um, your family will be granted the same visa as you. For example, if you're applying for the student visa, your family will be granted a student visa as well. Which, in that regard, whatever the condition of the visa you have, it will be also applied to your family member. The only tricky part is if you bring in the family member which is your children at the school age, this children will need to be at school because in Australia school is a compulsory right so and then you know it's going to be extra cost as well to you another important part is is the health cover now this uh, most of people they don't understand about how the health cover work every international student they will need to have a overseas student health cover which cover the duration of their study so some people ask me, okay, can I just pay, I want to study a three years course, but I just pay monthly or I pay for the first 12 months and then I pay later. No, you can't. You cannot because the department will not grant you the visa for the whole duration of your study. So basically the health cover you pay is also is going to impact on how long the visa valid for. So if you only pay for 12 months, the department only going to give you the visa for 12 months, right? There is also, it's quite big uh, extra cost because if you're studying three years, obviously you need to pay all lump sum, maybe about 2,000 or 1,500, depending how many people included in the cover for the whole period. Yeah? So. Now, we move on to the Australian International Education Program before the COVID-19. Before the coronavirus impacting the international student in Australia, every single international student, they must study full time on campus. Right? And also attendance is one of the requirements 
one of the visa condition that you cannot breach. If you are studying in a university, the attendance requirement is not so much impacting on your visa uh, condition. But if you are studying on vocational study, which is you studying at colleges, then 80% of attendance must be met unless you have a special compassionate reason why you can't actually fulfill the attendance. The failure to meet this attendance may impact in your um, student visa cancellation because the department will get the report from your school like this student is not attending enough and then upon the report they will give you the notification of cancellation of your visa. Now if you're sick or if you have some personal problem you know then you will need to be able to provide a medical certificate or a reason why right so the working entitlement as i said before it's 20 to 48 to, to 40 hours per fortnight depending on um, on uh, your week working so if you want to work one week 40 hours then the next week you cannot work but then you can work uh, 15 hours this week and next week you can work extra 25 hours as long as you don't work longer than 40 hours per fortnight. Now this is actually it's very popular with the international student because as I said they can learn while they study as well. They can earn the extra money while they gain experience. Uh, I will give you the example of students studying in hospitality. When they study, when they start it, they have no knowledge about how to cut um, uh, properly for uh, capsicum, uh, onions, and how to work in the kitchen with the, um, you know, properly with, um, under the supervision of the chef, a proper chef. Now, if you study hospitality in Australia and then you lucky enough to find a job in the restaurant, you will be supervised by a qualified chef which will guide you in, you know, like in working properly and then um, uh, uh, what, applying your theory at school in the workplace. So you get the practical training as well and you get paid as well, right? And of course, with that come also the travel entitlements. While you're on the student visa, you can go in and out on your current visa. There is no restriction on your travel movements, right? Now, during COVID-19 pandemic, there is quite a lot of uh, changes that the government does. It is to protect Australian and permanent residents as, you know, the same in any other country. And therefore, several changes were made. Some of them are good. Some of them maybe is not so much popular for students that start overseas at the moment. In fact, it's not just student, all the temporary visa holders, right? But because of the COVID-19, the, the government understand that, you know, all the class are closed now, that uh, social distancing in place, so there is no, it's no longer on campus learning. And therefore, the government allow international students to study online and do the remote learning. So. If you enroll here and you start overseas, say like in Malaysia, in um, China, in India, you still be able to continue your study by online learning. And that will be regarded as when you study on campus. Right? So when you're allowed to come back here again, then you already, you know, like you already study all that period and maybe you can pass the level uh, certificate two, certificate three, or you study in university, then, you know, that it doesn't stop you from studying and from gaining your qualification. Right? Attendance at class, they will disregard it during this period. So obviously you cannot attend the class and you cannot meet the 80% requirement for uh, the vocational study. And they accepted that reason as well. Right? In some of the um, occupation, the government has relaxed some working hours from 40 hours maximum into, you know, uh, unlimited. As long as you work in healthcare, HK, and agriculture, because obviously they need a lot of 
uh, more people to help others in, you know, in aged care facilities or in hospitals, basically in health sectors, right? In agriculture, because during the COVID-19, apparently the demand for uh, food is increasingly demand, in demand. So um, Woolworths or Coles, actually they make a big profit during the last few months because people obviously stuck at home they don't go out so they prefer to cook at home and then they buy um, a lot of vegetables and ingredients from supermarket direct right now this is the bad one is the travel restriction and the border closure for people they arrive here after the 15th of march they actually have to do 14 days isolation so basically you arrive here you go into the isolation 14 days and then after 14 days you're considered healthy then you can go back right now the, the the trick is now if you are a student you're coming here after the 15 after the, the 14 days by the time you all well and healthy all the school closed so basically you can you can go to school anyway and that is why you can go online or remote learning right but for people they who is not here as of 20th of march you basically kind of like lock out from australia yeah because as of the 20th of march the the government doesn't allow anybody who is not permanent resident or australian citizen or immediate family of pr or australian citizen to come to australia and uh, we don't know when that's going to be lifted and this is quite a big issue for all temporary visa holders not just the student yeah uh, the government support is they understand that a lot of students obviously lost their jobs and then some of them are struggling to support themselves because they say even if the family can support themselves and then the family business in home country get interrupted by the coronavirus and then their business also slowing down or completely stop, they can't send the money for the children and the children here stuck. They don't know what to do. You know, they can't pay their fees. They, uh, some people actually, they can't pay the rent. Well, unfortunately, the government doesn't have any financial support other than allowing them to access their superannuation. For international students who has been working for 12 months and they have enough superannuation to access, the government allow them to access up to 10,000 from their superannuation. The trick is, I don't know if any student actually has that much uh, super because they're only allowed to work 20 to 40 hours per fortnight, right? So that is current issue, which is uh, a lot of people here now confused because they can't go home, even though the government, I know we had uh, a, a little bit of uh, misunderstanding when the government said, well, if you can't support yourself, then you go home. Basically, that is not quite what, uh, what he meant, but the, uh, uh, the people understand it incorrectly. What he tried to say is international students in Australia are expected to be able to support themselves because the government obviously doesn't give you hacks like you know, if you're Australian citizen. Now, when you cannot support yourself in that regard, you can't pay the fees, it doesn't matter where you study, the government will say, well, maybe it is better for you to be home with the family and your government will be able to support you as Australian government support their own citizen and their PR, right? So, but at the moment, there is no certainty. Student here, they can go out, not the student, everybody at the same. The visitor here, they start, they can find the flight home and then even if they can, find the flight home in home country the um, there is a border closure as well so you know this is a very bad situation right so basically that's what uh, covering uh, for the international students so thank you for listening if there is anybody that want to ask me a question please feel free to throw me the question anytime and then I will try to answer it and hopefully that's enough information I give for you today.